Hi everyone, it's Courtney. Welcome to my second cross stitch video. Um, I want to say first off the bat, thank you so much for the incredibly warm welcome that you gave me um, when I posted my first video two weeks ago. Um, I was just very overwhelmed by um, all of the positivity that you sent my way, all of the wonderful comments you left. Uh, they were so thoughtful and I was just very excited to be able to uh, meet so many of you, a couple of whom I have even, uh, you know, watched your videos. And so now that um, just makes me really happy to be meeting people in the community. So um, please keep it up. Um, I definitely want to keep talking. And I know that the people in my real life uh, are not so enthused when I want to talk about cross stitch. So it's really wonderful to have a place where that's what everybody wants to talk about. So because <laughs> I often do. Um, so thank you so much. Um, please keep commenting. Um, today I have something a little bit different for you than my first video. Um, uh, it's, I don't have any whip updates for you today. Um, as many of you who stitch might also feel the same, um, the craft of cross stitch is like kind of takes a long time, um, and it can take, you know, even several weeks to get to the point where you feel like you've made enough progress that you're excited to share your progress with somebody. So, um, I don't feel like I've made nearly enough progress to make another whip update video yet. Um, so those might be a little bit further apart than this, but, um, I do have some ideas for other types of videos that I want to intersperse with my whip updates. So, uh, this is one of those ideas. Um, I want to show you what I have in my stash, basically. And actually, um, a wonderful viewer named Marie, hi Marie, uh, mentioned in the comments of my first video that she kept waiting for me to open the basket. And I apologize for that. Um, I did have it with me in my last video, but I didn't intend to ever open it. I guess I just had it there because this is where I keep my works in progress. But for that video, I had laid them all out in front of me. and. So I was going to, because I was going to show you them all, and I actually never needed to open the basket, so, um, but today I'm actually, am going to show you what I have inside my basket. Um, this basket contains pretty much everything that I have in my cross stitch collection. It's a very small stash compared to what I've seen elsewhere on YouTube. Um, and that's mostly because I'm not really a collector of cross stitch things. I pretty much just get things as I need them for my projects. And so actually a lot of the materials that I purchased in the past are consumed um, by projects that I've finished and they've gone off to whatever their final destination is. And I don't really keep a lot of things necessarily. So um, I don't know if that will change as I kind of dig deeper in this hobby if I start collecting you know, these exotic fabrics or, you know, silk floss or beads, you know, if I start doing some of these beautiful mirabilia or chatelaine or heaven and earth designs, um, you know, maybe my collection will kind of naturally grow. But right now it fits pretty much all in this basket. The only thing, the only things that aren't in this basket right now are my current work in progress, which is Voyage by Satsuma Street. That is on my scroll frame. And so my Voyage and uh, my scroll frame and my lap frame are not in this basket right now. They're over in my stitchy spot. Um, I think they probably could fit in this basket if I totally disassembled the frame. Um, but there's really no reason to do that because I use it pretty much every day. Um, and the other things that are not in this basket are two floss organize, uh, organizing containers that I have. And I'm going to show you my floss organization system in a separate video. Uh, that I'm actually really excited to share with you also. But we'll save that for another time. So everything else for stitching besides what I just said is in this basket. So um, this basket, I do not know where it came from because it was a gift to me from my mother. Um, she gave it to me when I was probably maybe nine years old, I believe, um, along with a sewing starter kit. Um, and so this was my sewing basket um, for years when I was into that as a child, actually, I made a bunch of things, clothes for me, clothes for my Barbies, um, 
that sort of thing. So I sewed a lot as a child. I don't sew very much anymore, um, but I cross-stitch. And so there's a bunch of sewing stuff in here as, as well as cross-stitch stuff. But um, let's go ahead and look inside. So isn't this fabric cute? I love the blue interior. It's like a picnic basket, really. It probably came from a Hobby Lobby or Michaels or something, I would guess. Or possibly Walmart. When I was that age, my mom used to shop at Walmart a lot. But anyway, yeah, so that's the basket. So here's what it looks like inside the top of the basket. Um, all right, on top here, this is some leftover Navy Ada from my voyage work in progress. Um, and I actually already have a purpose for this in mind. Um, so when I talk to you in the future about my uh, the future works that I want to start, I'll bring this up again probably. Um, this gray Ada I just bought actually because I have a new start um, this month. So I will definitely um, be starting that. Actually, today I hope to finish Voyage. Um, it's Sunday, uh, September 6th. Um, so I want to finish Voyage today, today, I think I can, after I'm done making this video. Uh, and then so tomorrow on Labor Day, I'm going to start on my new start. And that's what this gray Ada is for. And I will uh, tell you more about that in my next whip update video. Um, next we have my current whips. This is um, my lace piece. Um, on the linen, which I, I haven't done anything with since my whip update video, but um, the, there it is. <laughs> and um, here is the burlap piece that I originally uh, was working on and then decided I didn't like as much anymore. Um, but regarding this piece, I wanted to say in particular thank you to everyone who was encouraging to me about this particular piece. There were several of you who were like, no, don't waste it, it's so pretty, find something else to do with it. Uh, so that was very inspiring and encouraging to know that you guys still think it's pretty. <laughs> so um, my favorite suggestion came from a viewer named Tamara Hunt. Hi, Tamara. Uh, and she suggested still making it into a pillow, but making it into a deck pillow for outdoors. And I thought that was a pretty good idea. So. Um, Maybe I'll do that. It'll the burlap is more appropriate for outdoors than for indoors for sure, and um, you know it's it would maybe help coordinate the style of my house to have similar pillows inside and outside. So I thought that was an awesome idea. Thank you, Tamara. Um, another whip is here. My grapes on canvas. Uh, again, I haven't done anything with this one. I've been working pretty much exclusively on Voyage for the last two weeks. But like I said, that's almost done, so um, it won't be too long before I pick these other ones up again. At this point, I'm not doing a rotation, but I think I might like to try that. So um, here's the next layer. This guy is actually a dust bag for a purse that I bought from Rebecca Minkoff. Um, and I've never put the purse back in this because it's my everyday purse and I literally use it every day. But um, this bag I have found to be like the perfect size for carrying a piece with me when I travel to work on. So um, that's what I have it in here for. It's um, It holds the work in progress, it holds floss and the scissors and everything, and it has some nice drawstring ribbons on the top of it. So, And it's really cute. <laughs> um, here's the next layer. Um, I have some embroidery hoops here. I mentioned in my first video that I don't actually like to work in hoops. Um, and that is uh, especially true since I got my scroll frame. Um, I'm totally not going back. Um, but if I do work in a hoop, which is maybe for some smaller projects possibly, um, I really prefer this pink one over the wooden ones. Um, it's been years since I've used these. I should probably get rid of them. <laughs> honestly, but the this business with the screws, you know, the tighten the outer hoop is has always been a little bit frustrating for me. Um, it doesn't, it's hard to get even tension across the fabric. Um, and this hoop, I don't know uh, if you've seen one like this before, probably if you guys are, you know, 
a lot of you are really experienced, so um, <laughs> this is maybe not novel to anyone except me, but this hoop has like some little handles here that you squeeze and then the inner hoop gets smaller and you can pull it out. So then you squeeze it and then the inner hoop fits right inside the ridge of the outer hoop. And so this hoop is super easy to use. You don't have to screw things. It just snaps right on and snaps right off. So if I ever do work in a hoop, this is the one that I use. But I only have this one size. So yeah, if I'm working on something super small, I can't use this. Usually then I just stitch fabric in hand. Um, and if it's something much bigger than this, then I really do prefer to use my scroll frame. So there's my hoops. These wooden ones, actually maybe all of them. I can't remember for sure where I got this one, but these wooden ones definitely came from my grandmother with the starter kit that she gave me when I was a child, and she taught me how to cross stitch. Um, the next thing is this little bag. Um, this contains all of my sewing tools. Um, I have pins and my tomato pin cushion. I think everybody and their mom has one of these. <laughs> Uh, and my measuring tape and needles and a seam ripper and a bunch of just tools for sewing. Some buttons in there too. Nothing really related to cross stitch in particular in there. Um, and some thread. Not embroidery floss. This is the kind of thread that you can use on the sewing machine. I actually do have a sewing machine. Um, my mother-in-law gave it to me um, a couple Christmases ago, the Christmas that I was engaged to my husband. She gave it to me. And that was actually a really special, um, kind of an expensive gift for like the traditions of our family, I guess. But she said, every bride needs a sewing machine. So that's where my sewing machine came from. <laughs> she also gave me this guy. Um, this is a, it's like a pizza cutter for fabric, basically. It's kind of cool. I haven't actually opened it yet um, because I haven't um, done any quilting since she gave this to me. But she's a quilter and she taught me um, a little bit of how to do that. So this is in anticipation of future quilting projects um, with my mother-in-law. So um, it's not really super useful for um, cross stitch. Um, here's some extra pearl cotton. Oh, and speaking of that, um, several of you were very educational to me about this. Um, a viewer named Longtime Stitcher, hi Longtime Stitcher, told me that this is number five pearl cotton, most likely, and I did check the label after uh, she, I'm assuming you're a woman, you can please correct me uh, if you'd like to, um, said that uh, I, I checked after um, reading that and it is number five. So that was something I learned from her. It was very educational that this cotton actually does come in different sizes. So um, I think that as the numbers get higher, the size of the floss gets smaller. Um, but I'm not totally sure about that. Um, and uh, another viewer named, I apologize if I mispronounced this, um, Cressia Crafts. Hi, Cressia Crafts. Uh, told me that this is used in a type of embroidery ca called hardanger and I had never heard of that type of craft before and so I searched for it on the internet and found some awesome like basic tutorial videos about how to do hardanger um, and basically you can make like different kinds of lace in fabric with it and like I don't know things like doilies and placemats work really well with it so uh, that was super cool to learn about. She said that I can use this if I ever try Hardanger. So thank you so much for that suggestion and for introducing me to a new kind of embroidery. That was really exciting to learn about. So, um, Now we're down another layer. Um, on this side, this is all um, the materials for my um, Advent, my Blessed Nativity Advent um, calendar work in progress. So um, I showed this to you last time, I think. It was the one that I said that I wasn't sure if I even wanted to keep working on it. Um, so several of you were very understanding about 
that and had told me some stories about when that had happened to you in the past. Um, so that was really helpful, but um, look at this mess. <laughs> Isn't that yucky? I really prefer to have my floss on bobbins, so I'm going to show you more of that next week. But this is the floss for the, that came with this kit, and it's not DMC floss, and so it doesn't really fit in my floss system. And it's, I mean, honestly, a little bit gross now that it's been, well, it's, it's been terribly mistreated, as you can see, so that's probably partially my fault. But if I don't finish this, um, I really don't think that I'll want to use the floss for anything else, so I haven't been very motivated to take care of it, which is kind of sad. But anyway, yeah, this kind of makes me go, Ugh, <laughs> when I see it. So there's a sign. Um, oh, this one. I did not show you guys this. This is technically a whip, I guess. Maybe more of a UFO, an unfinished object, if any of you are new to Floss Tube and watching my video. Um, this is a, an alphabet sampler. Um, and this was I, not my first cross-stitch project, but I believe my second ever cross-stitch project to start working on. And it's not finished because this is a little bit of an unusual situation, I guess. It, my uh, my grandma taught me how to cross stitch, and she basically like designed this pattern and kitted it up for me herself with things from her stash. Um, so she, I think I picked the alphabet out of a magazine, a craft magazine that she had. I picked an alphabet that I liked, and then she arranged it. Um, on the fabric and put a border around it and put my name at the top with some hearts and then she actually Because um, I was brand new to this and I was like probably seven or eight years old when she taught me how to do this she actually Essentially stamped the pattern on here for me um, You can see it really well. I think in the heart right there see the pink that is underneath the purple heart um, that is basically sharpie that um, she actually took a marker and went and colored in each individual square on the ADA so that I would basically be able to find the pattern and I wouldn't have to deal with counting out all of the stitches <laughs> so that must have been super labor intensive for her but that was really special so she actually made a stamped cross stitch kit for me and uh, gave me like I picked colors out. I remember picking like the purples and the blue out from her own stash of floss And she just gave me whatever she had But the this isn't actually finished because I didn't she never she didn't give me enough of the dark green color um, So and I think the light purple also I didn't have quite enough to finish this um, so there are a couple stitches missing because the floss is gone and I guess I could go back and try to match it to a DMC, um, but I haven't been super motivated to do that. But isn't that kind of special? So this whip is at least 15 years old. Yeah, I'm kind of sentimental about that one. <laughs> um, next down here, I just have some extra white. 14 count Ada and some extra cream colored I don't even know what count this is it looks like 18 maybe count Ada just you know left over from old projects the white Ada in particular can be used for other things so that's why I kept it I don't always keep scraps from old projects but I say that as I come to like an entire pile of scraps from old projects <laughs> um, this, this is not really an old project, but it's just, it's extra linen for my lace design pillowcases. Um, I'm going to ultimately make two of those pillowcases, so there's enough linen here for um, four sides of a, the pillowcase. So um, that's what that is. Um, this whole stack of scraps is left over from a project. It's 
like clearly not the kind of fabric that you typically cross stitch on well at least the dove stuff isn't um this kind of is that you can you can cross stitch on that and i actually um i did but this whole stack of fabric is left over from a collaboration that i did with my mother-in-law who gave me the sewing machine and who quilts um she and i she taught me how to quilt on this particular project and we made it together and it, i actually added some cross stitch embellishments to the quilt so um to the quilting project i should say um so that is a finished object that it, when i make a finished objects video i'll show it to you guys um and i'm really proud of what we made out of this stuff but i'll tell you more whenever i make a finished objects video but that's a very special memory for me i liked working together with her on craft <laughs> that was super cool and it, what we made is actually an heirloom um, for our family um, in the future so but I'll show you don't get too excited because <laughs> it might be a couple weeks before I make more video an another video um, then down here I just got some ribbon don't know what this is from and a zipper from way back years ago when I was making my own clothes with my mom's sewing machine as like a 13 year old um, some elastic and then the last, the very last thing, oh, well, no, here's, here's some buttons. The very last things in the very bottom of this basket, because I've never touched them, are some kits. These are, these were given to me by my grandmother when I first started cross-stitching. When she taught me how to cross-stitch, she set me up with a bunch of kits from her stash, um, and these were two of them, but you may notice that they are not actually cross stitch kits. They are embroidery kits, basically. They're mostly satin stitches, I think, but some other kinds of specialty stitches are in here, just not a lot of cross stitch. Um, so I haven't done them because I've been pretty happy just doing cross stitch. Um, and the style of the work that I do is pretty important to me. And these patterns are not necessarily my style, but yeah, um, she gave me these. So um, this one is from Kathy Needlecraft. It's the Heritage Series Fall Season. So can you see that? The little farm scene, I guess in autumn or maybe early winter. Looks like maybe there's snow on the ground to me. Um, but yeah, uh, this one actually comes with its own frame and it is stamped on, the pattern is stamped on the fabric, which I think is a little bit different when you're doing um, this kind of embroidery. It, just having the stamps on there helps guide your, um, the beginning and end points of your stitches better since you're not actually doing these uniform X's. In a way, I think, well, I suspect because I've never actually tried this, that cross stitch is easier <laughs> than um, regular embroidery because uh, you don't need to have such an artistic hand. Um, like the X's are literally laid out on a grid for you and you just have to follow the instructions that some other artistic person laid out for you. But um, with this kind of embroidery, I guess it's a lot more, it's like painting freehand versus painting by number. I feel like cross stitch is kind of like paint by number. <laughs> so I'm a little bit intimidated by this kind of project. Um, so there's um, fall season. And then this other kit is actually a twofer. There are two patterns in here. There's a little church by a lake and then holly tree chickadees right here. So those are pretty cute. And the floss is in a big mess in the back. This is from the Creative Circle. Um, yep. So, and then this is also this also has the pattern stamped straight on the fabric. I don't know if you can see that or not, but because it's hiding behind the instructions. But that's good that there are instructions in here. I assume for all the different kinds of stitches that you can do on this pattern. 
And it looks like there might be some fun specialty stitches on the trees in that picture. Looks like a bunch of French knots um, as the, like the snow on the pine trees and the flowers in the foreground also. Yeah, so that could be pretty fun. I don't know if I'm ever going to do these because there's so much cross stitch that I actually do actively want to do. Um, besides the various works that I have right now, I have probably like six or seven or eight other projects in mind to do in the future. Um, so these are not even on the list and they've been kind of just sitting in the bottom of my basket waiting for someone to decide that they want to do them. So I don't know if I ever actually will because um, there's other things I want to do and the actual artwork in these is not my style for that for like keeping in my house so um actually um if i were hypothetically in the future to do a giveaway on my channel is there anyone out there who would be interested in tackling some other embroidery besides cross stitch and who likes these patterns um if that's you, then please express interest in the comments and maybe in the future, I might feature one or both of these in a giveaway. I don't know if they're even anybody's style, if anybody would really like to receive these or not. But if it's your style, let me know. So there are, there's a single um, cabin and then there's the church and the chickadees. Uh, so, and with that, uh, we've reached the bottom of the basket. That's all that I have in here. So, like I said, it's a pretty small stash, um, but it's fine, and it's got everything in it that I need for right now. So, um, yeah, that is, I think, about everything that I had to talk about with you today. Um, I think in my next video, you can expect a whip update. Um, in a couple weeks. Um, really excited to show you whenever I finish Voyage, which will surely be soon, like I said, hopefully today. Um, and I also have a new start coming up um, that's going to be a gift for someone else, but I'm pretty sure that that someone else does not watch my channel, so I'm going to show you anyway. Um, and maybe I'll make some progress in between now and then on some of my older um, outstanding uh, works in progress. Um, and then after that video, um, this is kind of going way far forward in the future because my updates I'm expecting will be give or take two weeks in between. Don't hold me to anything, please. <laughs> um, I definitely don't want posting videos to YouTube to become a chore. Um, I have really been enjoying this so far and I don't want to feel stressed about getting content out so anyway my general plan though just so you know is a whip update next and then after that a video about my floss storage system which I'm very excited to share with you guys because I have not seen anyone else on YouTube who does it they're labeling exactly like me so um, please look forward to that and uh, please do comment on um, anything that I talked about here or anything that you want to talk about, especially as it relates to stitching. Uh, and I can't wait to talk to you more in the comments. So until then, happy stitching.